Hey everyone, Chris from Macombo here and I'm here with the Honor 8 Pro, brand new handset just launched by Honor. I've actually had the chance to go uh, hands on with it and everything before the official launch and now we're going to do a quick unboxing and uh, set up the phone and check out the phone itself as well. Uh, and the box itself actually has a very unique and sexy feature which we will also be showing off. Uh, some more on that in a bit. So first of all, Honor 8 Pro, it's, uh, it's the most premium phone that Honor has done so far. It's an updated version obviously of the original Honor 8 um, with some seriously premium specs. It's going to cost £475 when it hits the UK later in April. Uh, you can pick it up in a couple of different hues. So this is obviously the navy blue version. You can also get it in gold and black. Uh, but the blue uh, version certainly looks like the most attractive of the three. And it's the one that Honor is bigging up the most. Uh, first glance, of course, it does look a lot like the original Honor 8, but it's a lot bigger as well. It's a 5.7 hands, 5.7 inch handset now, I should say. Um, so we'll just pop that down here for a second, just see if it's got any charge in it, and then we'll take a closer look at the phone itself. It does, hooray! There we go, we'll just leave that there, and we're going to take a closer look at the box and the contents. Uh, so first of all, let's just uh, pull up this little bit here. Uh, let's get it out, there we go. Uh, so inside, uh, you of course get uh, a second box, which is full of all of your usual delights. Uh, so you've got a bit of a charger. Uh, this is a European version, obviously, so it's got a uh, two-pin plug, not a three-pin plug. Uh, but the finished version will, of course, come with a three-pin plug here in the UK. And you get a bit of the old uh, Type-C USB as well for charging up. Lovely stuff. Uh, what else do we get in here? That's about it by the looks of it, unless there's anything else in here. No, nope, nothing else in there. So the part of the box that we're really interested in is the fact that it turns into a VR headset in the same sort of style as the Google Cardboard, uh, which is a very unique feature indeed. I don't think we've seen that on a mobile phone before. Um, so what we'll do is we'll follow the instructions on the side here. So it looks like you need to pop a couple of lenses in, so that should hopefully be in here. Yep, there we go. Uh, you'll get, oh look, a lovely pin pokey device to actually get a SIM card into the phone, which is lovely stuff. Uh, so let's get this open. Right, there we go. So we've got our lenses, so they should hopefully somehow pop into this thing and hold firm. Uh, looks like you need to insert them from this side. Okay, so let's give this a go. Uh, oh, okay, it popped. There we go, it seems to be holding firm. Right, okay, let's do it the same with this second lens. Pop! Right, there we go. So we now have two lenses in the uh, in the VR headset. Uh, pop this little bit down. Yep, so that's that's the second step. Pop that little flap down. Uh, third of all, it looks like you need to slot the phone inside. Uh, so the phone goes there, like so. And then you get the, uh, the rest of the box, and that just goes over there, like so. Oh no! We've lost the lens. We've lost the lens. It's okay. It's fine. Uh, go on, back in. Oh god damn it. <laughs> I'm confused. And then the phone basically goes in there. And then the whole thing goes back into the main box. Like so. And then there you go. You've got your VR headset. Excellent stuff. Uh, so you can. Uh, Get involved with a bit of VR gaming, uh, check out some VR experiences, and the phone does come with Jordan VR apparently pre-installed, uh, so you can use that to, uh, to immediately start to enjoy some VR videos. Uh, so right, let's actually get the phone set up, and then we can have a whiz around the main interface of that as well. Right, we've completed the uh, the slightly lengthy setup process, and we're now going to check out a bit more about the Honor 8 Pro itself. So as you can see, first of all, it's a different design from the original Honor 8. It's obviously a bigger handset at 5.7 inches. Uh, feels quite comfortable to clutch, thanks to the fact that the screen stretches uh, almost from the uh, the left to the right edge, as you can see there. Uh, similar sort of dimensions to the Samsung Galaxy S8. You'll again be slightly struggling to uh, reach the top of the screen, uh, but of course there are some one-handed modes in there to help out a bit. It's surprisingly slender. It's less than seven millimeters thick in all, as you can see there. And of course, everything uh, is nice and tidily tucked away. There's no sticky out camera lens or anything. That's all neatly uh, tucked away in the corner there. Uh, fingerprint sensor is slightly embossed on the surface there. And uh, yeah, no, it feels good. Uh, obviously, you've got a brushed metal finish on the back rather than the glossy uh, design of the original on it. It uh, feels nice and rugged. It's not water resistant, sadly, but you can't have everything, I guess. Uh, and of course, you can pick it up in those different colors. Really like the blue finish. Very nice, attractive uh, design overall. Uh, fingerprint sensor seems nice and uh, quick and responsive, so if we just tap the, uh, the finger to the surface, it immediately launches the uh, the desktop, as you can see there. So again, I'll just tap now, 
and pretty much straight into the desktop's lovely stuff. Uh, it's 5.7 inch Quad HD screen, so as you can see, images are nice and crisp. If we just uh, get in there uh, nice and close, you can see there. Super, super sharp, can't see individual pixels. Um, colors seem sort of reasonably vibrant. If we dive into the actual display settings, uh, which is right here, uh, you see, of course, you get uh, the choice of fiddling around with the color temperature. And of course, you get well, is eye comfort mode, which basically filters the blue light for a more comfortable nighttime experience. Lovely stuff. It is, of course, full Emotion UI 5.1 running on top of Android 7.0, as you can see there. Uh, we are pretty big fans of uh, Emotion UI 5. Uh, as you'll know, if you've uh, checked out our full review and all the rest of it, you get loads of bonus uh, little features and everything there, lots of gesture control. For instance, you finally get a nice bit of App Store action as well, which is good, so you can tuck away all of those pre-installed apps and everything else that you download. Uh, just give it a second, there we go. So now we, all our apps can be tucked away in there, and we don't have to have them clutter in the desktops like so. Because um, you do get quite a lot of uh, Huawei stuff pre-installed, like of high care and all the rest of it. It's a good bit of resource management. Uh, of course, the Vmall uh, link for, for checking out more Honor phones and accessories. You get some pre-installed games, which are mostly not very good. Uh, you can get various other apps as well, Twitter, TripAdvisor, all the rest of it. And of course, good old Jaunt is in there as well, which I believe is in the top apps. Yep, there you go, Jaunt VR. So you can get your VR uh, action on the go straight away uh, without even having to download anything from Google Play. Lovely stuff. Um, and of course, you get loads of other bonus settings. We've again, we've covered all of this in our Emotion UI uh, review and all the rest of it. Uh, but yeah, you get fingerprint gestures. So, for instance, you can uh, pull down the notifications bar by just flicking down on the fingerprint sensor uh, with any finger. It doesn't have to be a registered finger either. Uh, so that helps out a bit with the old one-handed mode and all the rest of it. And of course, in the smart assistants, you get some other bonus features. One-handed UI, so you can uh, shrink the screen and all the rest of it too. Definitely going to help out considering it's a beefy 5.7-inch smartphone. Uh, it's running the Kirin 960 processor, uh, the same processor found in the Huawei P10 and the Mate 9. So as you can see, everything's nice and nippy as you would expect. There's very little delay when you, for instance, open an app, boop, straight into it. Uh, so that's great stuff. Um, yeah, should be nice and nippy. Definitely one of the, uh, the fastest chipsets around right now and found only in premium phones. And it's got 6 gigs of RAM backing it up as well. So again, that should really help out if you're running apps side by side and all the rest of it. You can, of course, do split screen mode, as you can see there, courtesy of Android 7.0. So you can run two apps side by side, which this uh, phone is really good to be made for, to be honest, because obviously it is a big one. It is very big. Uh, so you can do a bit of that. There we go. Lovely stuff. And of course, games and all the rest of it should run nicely too. Uh, you get 64 gigs built in storage as well, and that is expandable via micro SD. Um, so there you go, 49 uh, gigs are available as of the start of it, despite the fact that loads of apps are pre installed. And there's the old SIM tray to, uh, to boost that as well. You can, of course, slip in a second SIM card as well if you don't want to use micro SD. Uh, so that's handy if you've got like a work SIM and a, uh, another SIM as well. Uh, 4,000 milliamp battery in it as well, so hopefully it should keep you going all day, supports fast charge and all the rest of it. So what about the camera tech of course, as you can see on the rear here you have a dual lens 12 megapixel camera, so that's two 12 megapixel lenses in all, uh, just like you get on the original Honor 8, if we tap our way into the camera app, we should find that it's basically the exact same setup as uh, the Honor 8 as well. So as you can see, you get a few uh, little toggles down the left edge there, uh, the likes of beauty mode, you've got your wide aperture mode, which uses both lenses to capture a lovely bokeh effect, which is very attractive indeed. Uh, and of course, with a swipe this away, you're gonna open up lots of bonus camera modes. So for instance, you can shoot uh, with manual controls, you've got HDR, which sadly isn't built into the auto mode, but it's available if you've got a bit of tricky contrast to deal with. Uh, Huawei is light painting mode, which it loves very much, likes the time lapse and slow mo, of course. Lots of stuff to keep you busy. Uh, you can also switch to, of course, full video mode with a quick tap here. And you can shoot up to 4K video, as you would expect, uh, just as you can on the latest Huawei phones. Lovely stuff. Just a quick tap of that takes you out of the video mode. Whoop, there we go. And if you swipe uh, this away, you will bring up the general settings. So as you can see here, you can play around with the resolution, uh, a bit of object tracking and all the rest of it. Uh, so there's lots of different things you can do in there too. Uh, so yeah, so certainly two 12 megapixel stuff. It sounds exactly the same as the Audi 8 camera, to be honest. Um, should be nice and fast, as you see there. Tap, tap, tap. Uh, it's got full laser focus and all the rest of it as well. Uh, so it should be nice and nippy in uh, general use. 
and it's an f 2.2 aperture lens as well so low light shots probably won't come out particularly strong uh, but for the rest of it it should be absolutely fine so that in a nutshell is the Honor 8 Pro. We're going to give it a full testing out. Uh, stay tuned for our full camera review and all the rest of it. I'm also going to do lots of comparisons with other big Huawei and Honor handsets. If there's anything you want to know, just let us know in the comments below. And thanks for watching, people. Bye-bye.